So there is more than one way that you can start chenille stitch. And uh, the way that I've seen it the most is when you start with a ladder stitch start and then move into the, the chenille stitch but you actually can start it out with chenille stitch right off the bat. And so that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Let's take a closer look and I'll show you the difference between the two. So here are my samples. This one and this one are samples of uh, doing chenille stitch where I did a border, a ladder stitch border on either side. So it really kind of gi gives you a nice set off look. But here's what it looks like when you do it without a border, so it's more seamless. And there may be definitely times when, maybe definitely, that doesn't work. Anyway, there will be times when you want to omit that border. So let me show you how to do that. Put these out of the way here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do uh, three stitches around. And so that three stitches around means that I am going to have, I'm going to pick up uh, six beads. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna turn these into a circle. So I'm bringing them down so that I have enough tail left over, about four to six inches to weave back in. And then I'm passing through all of those beads again. And to truly turn it into a circle, I have to move one more bead around past the tail. Okay, so here's my initial circle. So to start out the chenille stitch right away, what we're going to do is pick up one, and then we're going to pass through two beads on the circle. And then you're going to pick up one, and you're passing through two beads on the circle. Pick up one, pass through, oop, I bet you that you can't see that, I bet. Two beads on the circle. Now this is the last stitch that I'm doing on this round, which means I need to do my step up, and my step up is through that first sticky outy bead on the round that I just did. Don't worry about the fact that it's kind of sitting like a triangle right now. It's going to, and, and that it's going out flat. On this next round, we're going to make it come up, uh, start working vertically. So remember that after you do a round with a single bead, that's when you do a round with two beads. So I'm picking up two and passing through the next uh, single sticky outy. And then as I tighten, I'm kind of tightening up and inward. So I'm encouraging it to start to turning into a tube. Pick up two, go through the next sticky outy. Then this will be my last stitch So I'm of this round. So I'm picking up two, going through the sticky outy from of gold plus, then this will be my step up through the first uh, of the doubles. Okay, so it's now kind of cupping a little bit. It really won't take its, its tubular shape for another row or two. So let's keep going. So here we go. We're going to pick up one. We're going through the second bead of that double. And then remember how we go across to the first bead of the next double. Interestingly enough, as I'm doing this, I realize that I'm doing this in the opposite direction that I did in the last video. So if the, my direction confuses you, just FYI, you can go either way. Um, right now I'm going counterclockwise. The first time I had gone around clockwise. You can go whichever direction is most comfortable for you. So then here's my last stitch of this row. I'm splitting the double. I'm going through the first bead of the next double. And then I have to do my step up through the first sticky outy. Let's go around one more time and then I'll show you how this is turning into a tube. So now we're picking up two in between the golds, between our singles. And this is my last stitch of this row. So I'm going through the gold plus the first bead of the double. So now here you go. You can, as I turn it sideways, you can see that this is now turned into a very beautiful tube with no border. And you would just continue to do this what, to whatever length you needed. And then you would just make sure that you end by adding around where you do the doubles so that the two ends match. 
and that is what gives you this look with no border. Easy peasy. You know, sometimes we make things so difficult on ourselves, and when we try it, turns out it's really easy. That's kind of the way I feel about the whole chenille stitch. I was a little intimidated about learning a whole new stitch, but honestly, once I got the rhythm of it, I was like, oh my God, I love this. So I hope you do too, and enjoy your chenille. <laughs>